I'm going to share with you. Jesus is mind, sound mind, sound mind. Um, this is a very crucial message to myself. I grew up in a family um, that, um, as a boy living, growing up there, um, it, it was, I don't remember a lot. By God's design, I was fortunate that way. If I could be a very sensitive boy, which I was actually, but by God's grace, um, sound mind is something I didn't have the words when I was little to ask God for. I never have this word, this vocabulary. I live in a family, my mom, my dad, and people around me, uh, because of the, the backdrop of that era, wars, um, all kind of unfortunate events taking place, and they have to leave home. My dad left home at 13 years old, putting two cornet on him and following the army and start to kill people. Uh, and my mom lost her dad when she was younger. So when I was much younger, I, I don't know, like, sound mom is such a precious thing. I did not have the vocabulary for it. I don't know how to call for it. I, I, I want it. I, I, I seriously, I need it, but I don't know how to call for it. And I don't even know how to pray. I don't even know how to pray for people. I, I know I, I experience argument, fighting, calling names, and, but they are loving, loving parents. I love them and they love me, but they just, I don't know how to call it. Like they are, they are born again Christians, and my parents, they are great people. If you have met them, they are great. They love people. They pray for people, and and, and they give. And, and they are they are good Christians. But but can, I, I, and as, as a boy living in that household, in that household, I, I I want to call out something, but I don't have the word for it. I don't have the vocabulary for it. I I I, I can find it and and. and and, and the church didn't really give me that word. I, I don't know how, to, I don't know this is saved, but we are all saved. It, it, it's a filled with the Holy Spirit. We are all filled with the Holy Spirit. It is, um, I don't know how to call for it. I, so, so to me, that's one of the, the, the things I puzzle most time is, I don't have words for it. So finally, finally, I got this word from the Bible called sound mind. Sound mind would you turn to your neighbor and say sound mind and and I, I didn't have the word before so so i don't know how now finally the bible gave me something so i want to share that secret with you which really helped me and and, and this is recorded in the bible uh uh <coughs> in second timothy 1 7 and um, let me read that scripture for you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. I know what that is. A spirit of fear. I, I really knew as a boy, even right now, I knew what the spirit of fear is. I knew. Uh, um, 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 yesterday, we have you know wonderful sister decorating the two hearts with a fresh petal from the flower. I love it. It's purple, beautiful. We put a light around it. But when I walk home, I have a fear in the back of my mind. I know those paddles are going to drop, okay? <laughs> you see that? You know, that's a fear we know. Like, you try so hard putting something so beautiful. Now it's just too beautiful hard. But now, today I walk in, there's a voice in me say, I told you. <laughs> it's beautiful. But, but you know, uh, sorry, uh, Fiona and <laughs> Julie <laughs> and Nan. Your paddles are falling down, okay? But you know what? <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. It, it, it's better than a complete heart because it's so rustic. It's so, yeah. So that's a true, <laughs> in a true marriage, you never have two complete beautiful hearts together. It's always, always like that. You know? Part of your life is falling down. So, so I think this is really representing, representing <laughs> a spirit of fear. It's a healthy dose of fear. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Should we be careful when the flu season comes? Yes. Should we go out, come home, wash our hands? You know, oh, yes. 
But 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 if there's a, a virus out there, should we be so careful to a point that we couldn't do anything in our life? Well, that that's it's, it's up to you and me where to draw the healthy dose of fear, and and that's where God gives us a free will to decide it. But the next part of this verse is so powerful. Um, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Oh. And there are other translations from NIV and all that. They translate the last word sound mind to be self-discipline, self-control. I think they got certain part of that translation, okay? But I love the King James Version here. This is the new King James Version. They really, this version called it, God has not given us a spirit of fear yet, but, I love that but, of power, of love, and of sound mind. I did experience power when I became a Christian. My whole family is very powerful. My dad could really be directing thousands of soldiers. My mom, mom is even more powerful because she's able to direct my dad, okay? Uh, I do experience love in my family. Yes, it's a loving family. We love each other deeply, you know. And, but we were missing one thing. It's called sound mind. It's more than self-control. Self-control is just barely making it how the Bible talk about a sound mind. So today, I, this is my personal story. So sound mind becomes such a crucial thing for me as a Christian that I know we need power, we need love. I see a lot of Christians too. They experience power. They pray very powerfully. They are in the powerful ministry. I know a lot of Christians, they are very loving. They care about other people. But when we come to the number three, sound mind, that's where we kind of don't have the vocabulary for it. And sometimes we fool ourselves, think we have power, we have love, and we guarantee to have sound mind. And can I share that truth with you right now? No. These three things come in order, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have two, you got the number three. The sound mind is something so precious that, that, that uh, Paul has to remind Timothy about it. You know, Timothy is Paul's spiritual son. And when Paul was writing this, he was in the prison in Roman, in a house arrest. And his condition was not very good compared to when he wrote 1 Timothy. But he put Timothy in the church of Ephesus, where it's a tough church to pastor, a young pastor, and the church has a woman problem. When I say woman problem, it's a powerful woman problem. Power ladies who really, really go wild. And that's why the first Timothy, Paul said, that, well, I forbid women to preach in the, in the church. I, my interpretation to that is because the Ephesus, the background of that, that city where the goddess is so powerful. So some of the women in the church start to really, really uh, stop, uh, 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 preach something uh, outside the Bible. So that's why Paul said that. But in the second Timothy, it's closer, it's intimate. It's like a father talking to the son, say, son, do not be disappointed that your spirit father is in prison. And this spiritual father care much more than just power and love. He says, son, I want you to know God give you the sound mind. So young people out there, when you grow up, you want power. Yeah, straight A, the best university. You want love, seeking for the spouse and all that. But how much you have experienced a sound mind. So today, I want to just share that with you, a sound mind. The, that's my personal experience as well. Jesus is my sound mind. If you are ready, can you just repeat that with me? Just proclaim right now. Jesus is my sound mind. One more time. Jesus is my sound mind. What is a sound mind? It's very, very, I'm going to define it. And Joyce Miles say this, which I, I think is well said. Nobody can say it better. You cannot have a positive, exciting life and a negative mind. 
Yeah? So we have so many Christians right now. You want to have a positive, exciting life as a Christian. Some of the couple there, you want your marriage to be positive. Maybe not exciting. I know. Like if you get married 30 years, exciting shouldn't be in the vocabulary. I got you. But like for people who are entering into marriage, for example, like a young girl in their 20s, they will say, I want to have an exciting and positive life marriage. You, you want a positive, exciting career. You want a positive, exciting ministry. But we cannot do it with a negative mind. Negative mind. We can. We can walk in a situation with a negative mind. So it's well said here. So the text, the Second Timothy first. Let me just let define right now what the Bible talk about sound mind. When I study this, when I start to look at this, is the only way, only one place the Bible uses this combined combo words, and that's why the New Testament Bible always create words to 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 because just as my personal experiences, sound mind never exists in my childhood. This word, so I struggle, and that's why Bible. Create a word 2,000 years ago to, uh, to show the world what uh, Jesus' heart is to give you a sound mind. It's a Greek word called so, phronio. It's combined with two words. So Paul called this word. The first word is sozo. The second word is uh, pr uh, pro uh, 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 phronio. Sozo and phronio, two words. Sozo means to be saved or delivered. So it's, it's referring to someone who almost died, who was bound by something, who have the close death experiences. It's so fearful, like that person almost experienced death. And sozo means, wow, suddenly it, that person is saved or delivered. Very much like um, uh, uh, somebody who just, you know, uh, 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 fall in the water, almost drowned. Somebody just pulled that person last minute. So sozo means saved and delivered. And phronio means total friend of mine. Total friend of mine. That means it's not just your thinking. That's a problem with the modern positive thinking crowd. Uh, a lot of people teach to think positively. Some of you have seen this. You talk to a friend, you were depressed, or you feel some, something you share, and your friend says, think positively. It's not a big deal. Anybody you heard that? It's not going to help you when you go through that, okay? Because we are not just think thinkers. It's a total friend of mine, including your intellect, your emotion, your heart, your will, your decision. It's phronio. This word means a total friend of mine. Wow. And you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, when a boy and a girlfriend are chasing each other, you see how the total friend of mine demonstrating. Have you seen like two people just fall in love? Their eyes never leave each other. Have you seen those people? Sometimes they are so touchy, their arms never leave each other. Like, they are always hand in hand. Have you seen those couples, like, walking on college campuses? And also now, high school, I, I walk around Princeton, I've seen people just stuck out of school, a boy and a girl, hand in hand, and you never... Well, that... <laughs> it's like, my eyes will not leave you. My heart is with you. I'm listening. You know, I'm with you. You know, it's a total friend of mine. Yesterday, I was in a restaurant. There were three girls just eating right next to us. And they probably just didn't go out, come out for a pandemic during the pandemic. So when they came out, the three girls are so good friends. And these three just talk with a total friend of mine. Have you seen three girls? They, never, they haven't met each other for a while. They sit down finally out of the cage. And the way they talk, oh, my Lord, my God. They use their total friend of mine talking. And, and they all talk at the same time. I don't know how they communicate. Three, they, 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 Xiao and I see they're like, whoa, this is a true communication. They don't need to listen. It's a total friend of mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about, like, this, when the Bible talks about these two words, that means you're a total friend of mine. That you devote all your heart, your soul, your strength, and your mind into something. That's what it's called, phronio. So, phronio is a common word. And what does that mean? I mean, give a definition from the Bible. It's very different 
from just positive thinking, just think positively. And so parents, you always give your, 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 your kids, like, think positively. You know, don't think too much. You are overthinking it. Not going to cut it. You know why? Because the Bible defines it very differently. Sound my definition, here we are. A mind that has been delivered, rescued, revived, savaged, and protected is now safe and secure. Do you love that? Let me try one more time. A mind that has been delivered, delivered, that means it has to come out of something like really... That's what the Bible summarizes the spirit of fear. Rest good. Something almost died, almost drowned, but now you get it back. You have a sense of it is precious. So you have to lose it before you know you got it. Am I too loud? Hallelujah. I'm trying to do it. Praise God. It has to be revived. Oh, I love this. Revived doesn't mean it's almost dead. It's almost buried. It has to be revived. So if you want to sound mine, we have to go through a period of procrastination, a period of like, you know, just like, a, 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 you know, a, the bear goes through the, the winter. It has to be revived, savaged. Oh, I love it. It comes from the junkyard. Oh, I love it. Uh, and my brother owned a junkyard and, um, and, and you don't know how he pulled out of the junkyard. Many precious stuff and protected. And this is now it's protected. You are not going to lose it again. And it's now safe and secure. I love it. Sound mind, anyone. I pray this is something God's going to talk to you right now, a sound mind, that you and I desire to have a sound mind. So from the second Timothy, let me give a couple of points here before we do a practice how we can deliver it. <laughs> let me go back. <laughs> deliver it, <laughs> rescue, <it>, revive, <laughs> salvage, protect from the old mind. What, what do we save from? I'll talk about in a minute. But there are three points I want you to just get right now. It takes the Spirit of God to produce a true sound mind. So it's very different from this world. The sound mind doesn't really come from a human just try to think positively. Anybody, when you were a boy and a girl, try to think positively, and it, you know it's not working. Yeah. yeah? Because you would never outthink yourself. With me on this one. Your ultimate limitation is yourself and myself. You are never out. So, so that's pretty much like you fall in the water and without anybody else, you want to pull yourself up by pull your hair up by yourself. It's not going to work. And you will take the spirit of God. That's why the Bible, uh, when the, the, uh, Paul talked to Timothy, he said, power. You see that? And love. Power. Power first. So, it, <laughs> so the true state of the sound mind doesn't just come like, you were born with a sick nerve. Or you were born with a tough heart. Or you were born with a less sensitive personality. It doesn't matter, my dear brothers and sisters. You can be born anyway, anyway, high tranquility, high acceptance. But the good news is the sound mind need to be worked on. The sound mind need to a lifelong progress and management and maintenance so we can step into by the power, the Spirit of God. We have to experience it. We have to have that supernatural side of story as well come into this. It's very, very, very crucial to all of us. Hallelujah. The second part of it, the concept of sound mind, has more to do with our attitude than we realize. This is where we miss. Sound mind is not born with, it's not natural born. It's not even by training. The sound mind is about our attitude. The attitude about when we face a negative mind or things come against the sound mind, we have an alarm system. We have a decision to make and say, this is what I'm going to respond to my thoughts, to my negative thinking all the time. Amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, all the time. Just say, all the time. All the time. Hallelujah. Our natural, in this case, Timothy's personality change as our mind is being restored. You can see Timothy from Paul's writing. He probably timid. He was the second generation in a very powerful church. And uh, Paul quoted his mom and his grandmom. A Bible quoted their name. So don't tell me those two women were not ministered. I think they did. They were. So, so I, I think self-defeat in First Timothy, that woman cannot minister. I think, you know, if there's any exception, then we know First Timothy is a special case for that particular church of Ephesus. 
So let's come back to this. Our natural personality change. You could see, now see Timothy now, very timid. So I'm, I'm, I'm joking, like, um, don't name your son Timothy because it sounds like timid. You know, I joke about it, but don't take that, don't take that too hard, right? Because timid Timothy, after Paul's encouragement, after he was put on the spot to pastor a church, this timid Timothy totally transformed. He was bold. He came up against with love, preach. He, you know, are able to just go against the false prophets and the wrong preaching of that day. And I pray some of our young people, you may look timid. You may look, your personality may not be a leader's type. You may think, you know, you, oh, 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 oh. I have a good news for you. Sound mind doesn't come in natural leadership. Sound mind come when you fight, when you're able to say, Lord, I want to have the sound, your sound mind in me. So it's coming from delivered, savaged, protected. You just rescue your mind, rescue the total friend of your mind so that from the wreckage and you are able to stand out and say, Lord, right now, Jesus, you are my sound mind. That's my story. I was not born tough. I was born timid. I couldn't talk until I was four years old. I stuttered. I was extremely shy. You probably don't believe this, folks. No? Zach, do you believe that I was extremely shy? Really? See, Zach said, that's who I was. So I was a little timid Timothy by God's grace. If you see anything in your pastor today, I said, wow, there's just some kind of power there. Because Jesus is my sound mind. I set up, because my envir- environment, I decided my mind needs to be transformed to be Jesus' sound mind. I pray today you have that in you. And, and that's why this is something, it's not just supernaturally come. Yes, it will. But we have to what? Get it delivered, <laughs> saved, savaged, protected, all that. So I want to show you today an example. All right. Sound mind. Wow. Ooh. Well, with all that, some young people say, Coach K, whatever you preach, halfway through, I already for- forget the first part. So I'm going to do a pause right now. If you don't know what the sound mind is to you, that's okay. All right, young people, that's okay. Forget about all the sozo, you know, uh, perennial, the Greek, and all that. Let me, let me take a, another step, another, another try to it. Just get rid of all the negative thoughts from your mind. And whatever left will be fine. Is that good enough? Yes? Let's don't define what sound mind is. Okay? Let's go the other way. Just get rid of the negative thoughts from your mind. One by one. Mm. What's ever left is fine. That's what I'm going to do today. Are you ready? So let me give you a little bit of... Um, Time to reflect right now. How often do you experience negative thoughts about yourself? Negative thoughts means, you know, I suck, I, I can't do this, oh, I, whatever I do, or something. You know, how, like, how, how, how often? Anybody experience daily? Whoa. Once a week, maybe? Occasionally? Once a month? Only during holiday or special time? Wow, I, that peop, that that that. That person doesn't exist, okay? Never. I'm always a positive part person. Anybody, you are always a positive person. <laughs> so I want you to really put yourself, like all these five bullets, where you are. You could be 2.5. How often you experience negative thoughts about yourself? Or how often you experience negative thoughts about your children? How often? Now let's do the parent children thing. Daily? Zach um, actually went, sorry, Zach um, need to go to a track meet, field and track meet. And he told me like he's taking a ride. So I just nosy, I said, who is driving? Oh, so and so. Oh, he's a 
junior. He's a junior. So then I have to, I have to ask, how long he has he been driving? Oh, a couple months. Yeah. Couple months. Now, as a dad, how often do you experience negative thoughts about your children? I experienced almost every hour since that he left. It was rainy. It was a junior driving. A bunch of boys in the car. With me on this one? No? No, no you, you will never experience it. So, Joyce, once you become a parent, you will know what that means. Um, <laughs> so, I had to come to church, so I let it go. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> so, you see, this is real. <laughs> Just a negative thoughts could come to you. Oh, what if they rush to something? What if, you know, your heart starts to pump and negative thoughts start to pile up? Who is this junior? What's his name? Should I get their phone number? Should I call them? You see that? All right, so uh, uh, how often do you experience negative thoughts about people around you? Wow, about your boss, about your workplace. How often? This is, this is a good scale. I, I don't know where you are. Um, and this is where we have to draw a line somewhere. So um, I pray I'm going to just, the, the, um, the, the next part of this message will be very practical. We're going to take two negative thoughts, two negative thoughts, and we are going to do it together how we have a sound mind. Amen? Ready? You know, I can only demonstrate that to you. This is about my personal story, how I deal with those thoughts. But there are more thoughts. If, if, if Holy Spirit leads us, we may go through a couple more thoughts, just practice and together. This is very, very crucial because all my life, I have to fight these thoughts. You know, and, and I, I love my mom. My mom is high beauty, high odor, um, high power, high saving, all the high, okay? Uh, that's why, um, so, you know, um, I remember one time I, I went back to Taiwan a couple of years ago. Uh, we, we haven't seen each other in person a couple almost a year or two, the, the first moment I stepped into my house, my mom said, as a pastor, you wait too much. You need to lose weight. No, seriously. You gain, you gain weight. I'm like, Mom, I'm just home. <laughs> you, you see, I, I, I know he, she means well, but, <laughs> but you know, I mean, it's mingled. It's power and love. She means well for me. But when the words come out from her mouth, I have to, I have to like, oh, praise God. You know, I already practiced sound mind, so I'm not taking that from her. But can I be honest, when I come back to U.S., I decide to lose weight too, amen? Because that little word from your mom, my mom, still kind of bubbling up. See, that's why mom is mom, you know? Whatever you say, your sound may, eh, I give you that, but it will kind of trickling down just a little bit. It still impact me. You see that? So our words are very crucial. Sometimes we do have the power, we do have the love, but when we are not coming from a sound mind, the word come out just not right. The word come out become negative things that people have to deal, I, we have to deal with. So let me share, oh, well, that's another thing. Um, I probably won't go in detail. Anybody read the book called The, the Pilgrim? How do you call this book? Tian Lu Li and the Pilgrim Journey. Uh, it's one of the stops where the Christian come into a house. It's an inter interpreter house there. And you can see in that house, there was a very dusty room called Dusty, dusty Parlor. And the man come in and start to sweep the floor. And because it's dusty, when the man sweeping the floor, it's so dusty, just everybody starts to cough, and the room just filled with dust. You see that? And when we become Christian, we are born again. If we have negative thoughts, let me emphasize it. If we all have the leftover negative thoughts from our previous mm, life, <laughs> well, I should say previous, sorry, previous season, previous generations, we have negative thoughts as we grow up that we take that as a baby, even as a baby. It's like this man sweeping up a dusty parlor, a room that you walk around, whatever, how you try to clean up, you try to be a good Christian, you try to do things good, you try to be a good parent, you try to be a good student. When you sweep the floor up, 
you try to do good, you try to get it clean, your heart, you try to do the best, but you know what? The dust will make everybody cough in the room. Everybody, including you, your loved one. So, my dear brother and sister, sound mind. Turn your neighbor and say, sound mind. One more time, sound mind. Just say that. Sound mind. I pray we will not be this man sweeping up the room. Yes, we are doing Christian thing. But when we sweep up everything, even when we pray, even when we Bible study, even when we sit in the church, when we sweep up the room, everybody cough around you. Those dust are the negative thoughts. God will not take that negative thoughts out for you. You know why? Why God doesn't take the negative thoughts out for you and me? God is not a robot. How do you call it? The robot floor sweeper. God just ultimately go to your room like, sweep up the dust in the negative thoughts. Why God doesn't do that? Anybody know? Why God doesn't do it? It's our choice. It's a decision. A lot of us, be honest, we actually feel so comfortable with our negative thoughts. We cannot live without them. A lot of us have been motivated through generation by negative thoughts. A lot of like, for example, they, they have always a negative thought like, woman, you have to work. If you don't work, be careful. You might be abandoned by your man. Have you ever heard that kind of negative thoughts? Yes? No? Oh, you should go to some of the family because in a family line, maybe there's something happened. So they just instruct every woman has to work regardless of what. If you don't work, be careful. Your man may leave you. You see that? So, well, you go places, you will see that. And there are so many negative, we, we can say it's a you know, a world, a worldview or belief system. But today, I want to come to you from the, the Bible called negative thoughts. Sound mind. And so, um, so, are you ready? Let's do two practices how to get rid of this dust. Ready? Uh... There one, one negative thoughts. It's called absolute thinking. Ready? It sounds very good. A lot of places actually teach that. The tendency to place all experience in one or two opposite category. For example, false, defective, immaculate, or filthy, sin or sinner, black and white. Um, this absolute thinking sometimes create perfectionist. And, and, and it, 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 it's coming from fear, coming from the fear of failure. This absolute thinking coming from either you are the winner or you are the loser. This fear coming from a performance-driven society where you make it or you don't make it. And, and, and you can see that. And you can see now today the Instagram, Facebook, every place feel this kind of uh, uh, negative thinking. And when you read them, you watch them, you digest them, it's absolute thinking. You make it or you don't make it. And, and that's why um, we have seen now people on YouTube actually put the, the, the blue screen, the green screen in the background and show people they have been to the best place in the world. Have you seen those people? They, they put the green screen and then put, they actually teach you how to do it, that they actually surf in the uh, uh, Atlantic Ocean that you uh, 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 cave diving somewhere. Have you seen those things? And they put so real because it's absolute thinking. I've been there. I've done that. Yes, done. Check. This is the very, this is actually me as a boy. I grew up with absolute thinking. Absolute thinking. I was taught, look at so-and-so. He's a doctor. He is one. He make it. Look at so-and-so who didn't make it. Have you been that cultural? Like, compare? Look at your cousin. He made it. Oh, look at your nephew. Oh, she's not going to make it. Anybody? Have you seen that? After college entrance exam, so-and-so got into so-and-so so -and -so school. Oh, but the other people, I don't talk about it, you know? Been there? This is definitely a negative thoughts. Oh, Lord have mercy. I grew up like that. 
I grew up like that. Um, so, you know, there's one play, one time I have to uh, compete in a, um, a, a tournament, which is, uh, how do you call it, a public speaking competition. I was so afraid of public speaking, but I, I have to overcome that. You know, how many times I practice that speech? Guess. I, I was about third, third grade. How many times I practice, self-practice that speech? I would say about 200, 250 times. I memorize every sentence. I'm so afraid to make an error. So when I, so, so uh, no, I, I, I'm speaking from the bottom of my heart because I want this, you know, Jesus is my sound mind. I struggle too. So when I play piano, when I was practicing piano, I have this very bad habit. If one piece, I miss one note, I have to go all the way back to the beginning and start over again. Anybody with me on that one? Yeah. <laughs> because I think this piece is not perfect. It's like... You know, 90% is very good. Stop. Go back. Dun, 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 dun. You know, so I go back, repeat all the time, and I didn't even have time. Sometimes practice a finish because I never get there. Are you there? It's absolute thinking. It's so negative. Thing. It's a negative thoughts. It's a negativity that bother you and me. That's a problem with the performance-driven culture because it cultivates absolute thinking. You make it or don't make it. So parents, let me tell you the truth. The college your kids enter into, good or bad, it doesn't matter. You should stretch out right now how they can really foster a lifelong attitude, asking questions, learning, learning to fail. Okay, let me try that one more time. One more time. The absolute thinking, the college your kids go into, is Ivy League or is VI League, you name it, okay? Um, you know, I, I, no, I, I went to Ivy League school. I went to the best school. Can I tell you, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a very good spike in life. It doesn't prove anything. I'm serious. It doesn't prove anything because life is never a singularity. Life is a sequence of decision. Life is more than just that spike. But you ask me, do I want Zach to go to Ivy League school? Yes, I do. I do. But different thinking. He can go there as a college. He can go there as a summer camp. He can go there as a grad school. He can go there as a founding father. No, he can go there and give the million of dollars to get an honorable PhD degree. How about that? No, seriously. He doesn't have to take a skip college, make millions of dollars, come back, donate to Princeton. Either way, as long as he feels a sense of learning, as soon as he feels a sense of contributing, as he feels a sense of, I want to connect to the people who are learning, who are serious about intellectual practices, I want that. I don't want your kids to get out of college. I will never get back to college. It sucks. You know, I have a lot of Ivy League Princeton students after college, they never want to learn anything. They're just sick and tired of learning anymore. It's just a degree. No, I have that. I've seen people who got f graduated from Princeton Pop I'm sorry, Harvard Public Health School, master's degree, and then just hand a diploma to her mom and say, Mom, I did what you want me to do. Now your diploma. Now I'm going to study art. The problem is nothing wrong with it, but she was already 30. Start over again. And her colleague, people who are doing very good at art, when she went back to school, everybody studying with her was in their early 20s, 10 years differences. So what, what are you doing those 10 years? I'm studying public health at Harvard. Where's the diploma? In my mother's closet. How about that? That 10 years just... Oh, you say, oh, Coach K. I like to have that. Even though the diploma is in my closet. And this is my closet. Okay, if you want that, that's all right. 
So absolute thinking is a negative thought. How much I want to share that with you. So I hope you, you, you know your pastor is not like, uh, in Chinese, 吃不到葡萄说出葡萄酸. I don't know how to translate that into in English. It's like, oh, you, you are never a student, you've never been there. So you're like, eh, you know, it's like a sour grab type of you know, stuff. No, I've been there, done that. And I work with most of students from that, that, that kind of standard. My dear, dear, my dear brothers and sisters, it's about sound mind. All or nothing. Everything has to be perfect or else it's a failure. Well, we have to break this mold. We have to break this mold. We have to break this mold with a sound mind. Are you ready to break it? Well, nobody. It's like, uh, am I preaching to uh, what? Okay. I can't see you guys online, so I don't know. Maybe you guys are like, uh-oh, what's, what's our pastor doing today? Oh, nothing. Oh, nothing. That's part of the Chinese thinking. Be honest, it's all of nothing. It's because of, historically, that's how we elect the best people. That's how we choose our elites and all that. Oh, I'm going to go, I'm go at it. Lord. All right, so I'm come back to the Chinese community, which I belong. I love you guys. I, I am proud that I'm a Chinese. But you see, if Chinese, American Chinese, all or nothing concept is working, all our kids who grow up here speak perfect English. They go to Sunday school, they go to Chinese school, they have dual language. They do everything, they learn computer skill at three year old, computer programming skill. They do everything they could, Olympic, you know, competition. Finally, they got to the best school, they graduate. But if you go to Silicon Valley in the high tech industry, how many CEOs are Chinese? Do you know the percentage? Single digit. Why we have this best training education, but our young people cannot be the leader of a company? Why, why is that? Why? Or you say, oh, we, we don't want to be a CEO. We just want to be the best programmer you can ever have. Are you sure? Are you sure? Why? I dig into it, want me, I can preach about 10 hours on this. And part of that is this absolute thinking. You think life is one or zero. So we have to find this how, sound mind, anyone. What is the biblical way to fight this? All right, let me stop here. So people here, if you want to fight this thinking, how would you go at it? Anybody, give me something. I'm going to repeat so people online can hear. With this thinking, how do you fight it? Get over yourself, okay? And young people would fight it like this. Well, I'll play video again every day. I don't, I don't want to listen to this anymore. Anybody with me on this one? I need so much gaming so I can relax from this kind of thing. That's not the best way, but that's one way to get rid of the negative mind there. Anybody else? So Joy said, it's okay, you are a human being. Okay, you are not human doing. How, how do you get off this mindset? No, I'm serious. I, I, I'm going to slow down because I preach too much. If I can practice, we can apply this. We suffer this from generation to generation. Even some of the very best Christians, the way you talk to your children is from this negative mind. We got to stop. I have to smile. I'm not mad. I'm just, I'm, I'm, we are counterculture right now because I want you and your family generation to generation. You will love each other. And we can say, power, love, and sound mind. Amen? How do you go at it? How do we, how do we defeat this? How do we savage? How do we uh, rescue? How do we revive from this negative? Ben, give me something. How do you deal with this? Open-minded. Yeah, open-minded. That's very good. Open-minded. How open is open-minded? 
For example, I, oh, you play uh, 10 hours of video game. Well, I, I'm going to be video game professional video gamer. That's very open-minded. How open is open-minded? We have young people now answer, open-minded. Is it easy to be open-minded, Ben? Not easy, right? Some, for some people, exactly. Some of you will never be, and, and you are open-minded compared to your mom's open-minded, maybe different, right? Exactly. That's where things start to get complicated because you, I say, I am open-minded, but then you talk to your spouse, what? <laughs> you see, the differences, absolute thinking. So how, how can we go at this all or nothing, this absolute thinking thing? Zach, young people, how do you go at it? I know how Zach go at it. You know, every time, can I share a little bit? He's a very co fierce competitor. I don't know how to deal with his dad is also one. So every time he runs cross country, I, the first time I went, I almost had a heart attack. No, seriously, I went in, everybody on the field, 10 schools, and he looks skinny. He doesn't have muscle. So I said, so I take a note, muscle, and you know, this. And I see another dad just take his son, do a pre-warm-up exercise. I just video everything. Oh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Zach doesn't have that. And I just look at, and Zach and his friend just like walk around chat like, ah, ha, 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 you know, like. So I was so mad. I said, like, do you really care about it? So, so I'm so glad I married Shao Wei. Shao Wei say, shut up. Get out of here. <laughs> Next time, don't come here. Amen? That's how we deal with it. No, I'm serious. Get out of that coach cave on that field. Hallelujah. No, seriously, shall we just say, get out here, don't be here. Because I become nerve wracking. I'm like, I'm creating more nervous, nervousness for Zach. I'm like, Zach, did you do that? Do you see that? You know, why don't you warm up? Where's your muscle? Exactly, he's a distant runner. You know, so, so then Zach came back yesterday and said, oh, that's a muscle guy, that's a muscle guy. And I watch the race with Zach. I say, that's a muscle guy, that's a muscle guy. Zach just said, I beat him. <laughs> you see, sometimes we, we are so negative about things that we shouldn't be negative about. Amen? Oh, I'm preaching, I'm preaching right now. I, we, need, we need to fight against this, this all or nothing thing. Hallelujah. I know how Zach deals with it. He actually keeps a personal track of everything he done. But not to compare it to other people. He keep a track of his personal best over time. I've seen that occur. So he could lose this round, but he doesn't come home all or nothing. Oh, I lost. Oh, I'm so bad. No, right, Zach? He just come away. I did close to personal best. Can I do better? Can I do better? Can I do better? But then I keep him rounding and rounding and rounding. Zach, did I describe it kind of right? Yeah, he nod his head. So you are compared to yourself. You are fighting your negative thought every day against your own thoughts. You are not fighting against flesh or other people. You are competing, yes, but you are not fighting against them. Your identity, your value, your worth is not dictated by your competitor. Amen? That's biblical. Are you ready? Well, I, I don't want to go into this, all this, like, uh, um, Tanya either do th these things perfectly or not at all. If you saw the size of speck of dust at home, he saw it as a filthy. Ah. She was similarly strict with description about self. She was either doing okay or was falling every way. That's a description example. Pr I pray today, if you are listening, you are watching, um, hey, <laughs> um, that's my personal story too. God help me through Jesus Christ. This salvation is so necessary for me. Without this, I may look as a victorious, you know, uh, young people from coming from Taiwan, Princeton graduate and all that. But inside me, I would be timid. I would be arrogant if I really make it. I would not have mercy on other people. I wouldn't have empathy on other people who don't make it. I'm totally devastated or my life is completely destroyed to describe a situation that are difficult to deal with. So this is, there are three ways to deal with it. Are you ready? Number one is from the words of God. So that's why when I read Bible, I'm dealing with my negative thoughts because I cherish 
the sound mind that Jesus gave me. Look at how Jesus says it. So every time I read four Gospels, whatever Jesus says, there's a red, red, how you say, red letter version of Bible where Jesus, whatever Jesus said in red. I love it. I pay extra attention. This is what Jesus said that touched me as a boy. I'm a vine, Jesus said. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. Until today, I still don't know what this means, be honest. It's beautiful, but I'm trying. I experience, but I never have enough of it. That I abide in Jesus, Jesus abide in me. I've never had enough of it. For without me, you can do nothing. You see, I love this as a young boy. I forget about all the first sentences, but when I read this, I start with this. Jesus, thank you. Anyway, I can do nothing. I start with nothing. Anybody you were born with a degree, diploma in your hand. Anybody you were born with money in your hand. Anybody? Anybody born with a cell phone in your hand. Anybody you born with, no, we don't. We born with, we are naked. We came naked, right? Anybody different? Please let me know. I, 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 I really, really, I'm, I'm a very curious person. If you didn't come that way, let me know. And when we are gone, anybody you can bring anything with you? I come with nothing. I go with nothing. This is biblical. This is from the Bible. So the first thing I come to the Word of God in soothes me so much as a boy say, yes, I admit I come from nothing and I can do nothing without God. I just say that. I can do nothing. Oh, you Coach K, you did pretty well in the college entrance exam. But you should see what happened in, before that. Many family things happened. And, and that's why, you know, all through my co uh, high school years, junior high school years, every Saturday I went to church and teach some kids Sunday school. Every, no, think about that. In Taiwan, uh, I, let me ask Paul. In our time, Kids, Saturday afternoon usually go to Bushi Ban, right? Yes? I never gone to Bushi Ban because Saturday afternoon is my church's kids' Sunday school. They didn't, it's a small church, nobody can do anything, so I end up volunteering, teaching the kids who are two years younger than me. Every Saturday for six years before college entry exam, even before college entry exam, I never quit, I never stopped. I went to church, taught Sunday school. You know why? Because I already said to Jesus, Without you, I can do nothing. I might as well come serve you, come close to you. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed working with those kids. That's where I start to practice my speech. That's where I practice my, my, my posture because I was like, really. But then when I have to teach the kids, I have to do like, you know, all the songs with, you know, how do you call this? Like a, the, the, the inspiration, you know, like. God so loved me, yes, I know. You know, as a teenage boy, I hate this. God so loved me. You know, I mean, you know, boys hate their, their, you know, but I have to do that. So I start become more natural about this. And I start, see, nobody trained me, but because I have this mentality, say, without you, God, I can do nothing anyway. So I'm coming to whatever you want me to do first. And then I'll think about my own school. You see what? That God, God, God trained me. And you, you guys know I'm very good with kids, right? Have you ever seen I talk to kids? Shall we know? I know? I'm very good talking to little kids. You know what? I spent six years with them. I went to summer camp with them. I love kids. So I'm joking about this. Now, girls out there, listen to me. All Agape House girls, young girls. If your future boyfriend taught kids Sunday school, even just for a summer, he's qualified. At least he could be a candidate, all right? Just one more time. <laughs> Girls out there, if your future spouse or boy, they are willing to spend a summer teaching kids, be their counselor, just be there with them, that boy at least could be a candidate for your future husband. Amen? Shall we please say amen? <laughs> amen, hallelujah. Without you, I can do nothing. This is how we fight that negative thinking. So I grab to God. I'll never let him go. I grab to him. Next, second, if you remind, remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish. Again, I don't remember. The first two sentences are too, too scripture for me. 
Uh -uh, but the last two, ask whatever you wish, it will be done for you. Uh -uh. So you see, <laughs> I got it. So, what I, so, so, so this is something I want to share with you. It's not all or nothing. In the kingdom, it's upside down. It's nothing for all. Uh-huh, upside down. I'm nothing. I couldn't do nothing without God. If you have somebody you couldn't do nothing without, I bet you will call that person. You want to go to that person's place. You want to go knock on the office. Anybody, when you're looking for a job, you know what I'm talking about. Total friend of mine. You just want to call. You want to hear. You want to respond, right? That's how we should pursue God. Young people, I'm sharing my heart with you. If you see any success in me, nothing. It's nothing for all. All is in Jesus. My all is in Jesus. No, this is my life story. I'm sharing that with you. My all is in Jesus. I don't call this sacrifice. Oh, because when I become nothing in Christ, He becomes everything to me. He becomes everything to me. He becomes everything to me. Hallelujah. You need the word of God. And second, so that's how we pray. Second thing is about pray. So this is how I always pray. Say, Lord, I'm nothing. Ooh, I start with nothing. Without you, Jesus, I can do nothing. With you, I can do anything. It's nothing for all. one of my favorites to combat it. This is what I do. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things because I'm nothing. But you know, through Christ who is all in all, my all in all, I can do all things. Hallelujah. Sound mind, anybody? This is the only way we keep, keep the sound mind through life because you know what? Even you are the most fearsome learner. You are the, the smartest person in the room. You are the best athlete in the team. When you get out of that situation, there are always someone smarter than you. Yes? There are always someone faster than you. Yes? There are always someone stronger than you. Now, how do you and I keep the sound mind? Lord, I'm nothing. Look at how I started. Look how I started. I said, well, you start to have thanksgiving. Lord, look at how I started. Nothing. Look at what I have right now. Oh, thank you, God. But through you, strengthen me. I can do all things. Amen? I can dream about future. I have hope in the future. Hallelujah. Today, I may lost in this race. But you know what? I do pretty good on my personal best compared to my yesterday. Amen? Do you see how that keeps that positive? Not mine. Sound mine. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. I pray God is speaking to your heart and my heart right now. Oh, sound mine, every, anybody. Anybody. And of course, you know me, worship. So if you see your pastor sitting in the piano, yesterday Joey said, oh, you really like the piano. <laughs> I, 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 yes, I do. But I like playing the piano, not just a piano. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> um, so you see your pastor sit right behind the keyboard, not because he wants to show you off, show off like his piano skill. I don't care. I'm not a musician. I'm an engineer, okay? <laughs> when I play, it's, I'm playing for my sound mind, Jesus, worship. So when I was a boy, somebody betrayed me and I was alone. I almost lost my sound mind. And I was there alone, locked up somewhere. So I just started to sing these songs. I need the every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can be the force. I need thee, Lord, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. And then, mm, be now my Savior, I come unto thee. I need thee, 
Lord, I need thee. I do this because I don't want to look at me how I perform. But my heart is, is aligning with Jesus. It says, you are all of my everything. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Worship. That's why we come to church to worship. It's not just a time to, to get the time over. We come to worship, so we practice this. I have a theory. If we worship every seven, one, seven days, really, you know, wholeheartedly, we won't have a sound mind problem at all. Today, beautiful, amazed. I don't have time to sing it. All right, no small group today. Um, next week, we'll deal with another one, arbitrary inferences. If you come in, we'll deal with that next week. How about that? Every week, deal with one negativity. How about that? Yes? All right, can we all stand up? Let's just wrap up right here. Uh, I love this song that Joyce picked today. Let's just worship, and uh, some of you... You dance over me While I am a 